Hi, I'm Nick Fillingham, and on this Microsoft Campus Tour, Larry Larson gets a very special look at Microsoft Research with General Manager Kevin Schofield. Now, this tour was so extensive, we had to break it up into three parts. So make sure you stick around for part one, part two, and part three. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Larry Larson, and we're here in Building 99, uh, Microsoft Research, and we're here with Kevin Schofield, GM of MSR. And uh, this is a, a great space. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, well, welcome. It's great to have you here in Building 99. We've been here about three years. We got to work with the architect designing a space that worked really well for a research organization that's open and collaborative and you know, spontaneously comes up with ideas and people running each other a hallway. So you see lots of big open space where you can spot people from all over the building. We've got you know comfy chairs and, and a cafe area where people it's actually a working space. People can work with each other. Uh, you know we've got lots of smoke glass walls where if you run into somebody in the hallway, you can just start scribbling mathematical formulas on the wall. Great. It's a really great open space. And we're going to get a uh, very exclusive tour here. Yeah, um, a place that most people uh, can't really get into. Yeah, we're going to see our anechoic chamber where we do sound testing. We're going to see our hardware lab where we do hardware prototyping. We're going to see some new interesting prototypes of. Uh, surface computing kinds of devices that um, we're just sort of experimenting with the research on all these things, but you know, we'll down the road, hopefully some of the stuff will end up in product someday. Great, let's go check it out. Great. We're about to go inside the Anacar chamber, visit with Ivan Tashev, who's one of our researchers who does a lot of audio-related research. Um, fascinating stuff that uh, actually is shipping real shortly uh, now in, uh, in Connect. Great, let's, let's go, go take a look. All right, I'm here with Ivan Tashevs from the uh, Anechoic Chamber in MSR. And uh, tell us a little bit about what an Anechoic Chamber is and what you do here. So, Anechoic Chamber is a room which models absence of room. Inside, we have a complete silence, and this walls absorb the sound, so we don't have the reverberation, the sound bouncing from the walls and ceilings. And this allows us to simulate situation when we can measure the directivity patterns of our acoustical devices, microphones, loudspeakers, and to do precise estimation and tuning of our sound capturing and sound processing algorithms. But without further ado, let's go inside. All right. Double doors. Yes. So actually we're in a in a concrete cube, which sits on a one foot thick rubber, so we don't acquire vibrations from the street, from the ground. From the freeway. We don't touch the room, the, the building anywhere. And you see those edges when the sound goes, and it kind of reflects like this, and it is absorbed inside. So we are in a complete silence here. It's, the sound level is way lower than a pin drop. Uh, it's perfect environment for measuring acoustical devices, microphones. This is where we do our work. And the paradox here is that the fight with noise environment actually starts in complete silence. Uh, for humans, being here, a strange thing happens. The first, I sound weird, there is no noise. And most importantly, there is no the first reflection from the ground which is an important cue for distance, so I'm kind of stay somewhere. Second is, if you keep silence here, after two, three minutes, you start to hear noise in your ears. This is the blood in your vessels. And after a couple of minutes, you start to hear your heartbeat. So then, after 10, 15 minutes, there is information deprivation. The brain tries, which is a pattern matching machine, tries to match that noise with something you have heard. And as a result, you start to hear stuff, things you have heard, and the brain matches them with the segments of the noise. So we're not going there, but let me do a little experiment here. I'll clap. And you see how, how dry is this sound. There is absent that juicy reverberation tail at the end, which we'll repeat, we'll hear when we repeat the, the experiment outside. If you guys want, you can scream. First, it sounds weird. Second, nobody can hear us. <laughs> Go ahead. Ah! <laughs> okay. Now we can go outside and see what was actually created and measured here. Okay. So one of the devices we created here 
is so-called microphone array support for Windows Vista. Microphone array is a device which looks like this. It's nothing else but four microphones or more, two, three, four, more than one microphone, usually in a line, but they can be different configurations. What gives the microphone array more than a single microphone is the sense of direction. So pretty much when the sound comes from that direction, it reaches the microphones one after one, and we can measure this distance. So this allows us to distinguish when Kevin is talking from the moment when you talk. And this allows us to do additional, additional suppression and removal of the noise and the reverberation. So here is the experiment I promised inside the sound capturing room, the unequic chamber, the club. So you see how after the, that sharp signal we hear the reverberation. This is good when you are here, but this is bad when you capture this through a microphone and send it through a telecommunication line to the other room. Because here we, as humans, in two, two years, which is a microphone array, by the way, and 100 billion neurons between those two years, we can use those special cues and separate, remove the noise, and listen towards the given direction. One microphone, one telephone line, you go and play this in a different room, those special cues are gone. So we hear the reverberation, the brain tries to remove it, cannot get started, and as a result, this increases the fatigue, we get tired faster when you are uh, listening, attending a meeting in a, in a, uh, using a speakerphone. To do this, we have to remove the reverberation in the noise, and this is one of the devices which allows us to do so. Uh, for many of us, speech recognition is the same thing when you, you are a headset with closed talk microphone and you do dictation, which may or, not, may, may or may not work. It's a kind of a more geeky thing. Uh, microphone arrays as a sound capturing devices allow us to do a hands-free sound capturing, which means we can be at certain distance and the microphone array fights the reverberation, fights the noise and provides enough clean signal to the speech recognizer so you can basically do voice commands or even play some games. So this is the second demo. Let me show you a game which is a model. Pet Fest of Fortune. The category is Showbiz. Come on, people. It's a game. <laughs> okay, let me do this one. Go ahead. National Geographic Channel. You've done this before. Yeah, so many times <laughs> training the, the game. The category is phrase. Oh, this time I'll let you guys to solve the problem. Don't forget to raise your hand. Go ahead. Above and beyond. Yes. Wow. So this is pretty much it. As you can see, the enhanced sound capturing systems allow us to do a lot of more stuff. To open the door for scenarios unthinkable, let's say a couple of years ago. To let people to feel free to communicate with their computers in a different way. Not just using keyboard and mouse, but using the voice. And voice actually is an important component, but not the only so-called uh, natural user interface. What we try to achieve by improving the voice recognition and the sound capturing is to provide important components of so-called multimodal user interfaces. The way we'll communicate with our computers in a mixture of gesture, mouse, touch, voice, everything in its mode, which is the best, the most efficient, the most convenient for the users. Wow, so we've seen some really cool things here today. Uh, what happens after the, the big problems are solved? What's the, the next path for these things? Well, we work really hard with Microsoft's product groups, you know, really across the board, Windows, Office, Xbox, uh, all the product groups, to try to make sure we get sort of this constant flow of sort of state-of-the-art and new technologies into all of them. And it's really a partnership. It's about uh, sort of defining a really good complementary relationship. Well, thank you for the tour. Hey, my pleasure.